I uh, wanted to just start off by thanking uh, the Dow Sustainability Fellows and Graham uh, Sustainability Institute for the support uh, and the funding for this project. Uh, my name is Roland Amatefio. Uh, I've got with me Bryant Hemp, who will also be uh, presenting, and then Shirsty is also um, a part of our team, so she's here to support. Um, and I also want to give a shout out to Kira Barston, um, who's in the back there. She helped us a lot with this project, um, and we're so lucky to have her. Okay, so our project um, is titled Greening Low Income Self-Managed Housing, um, located in Brazil. Um, so we had quite a team with us, um, myself, Fanta, Bryant, Shanae, Kira, Shristi, Fabricio, and our faculty advisor, Ana, Piment uh, Ana Paula Pimentel-Walker. Um, so the, pro the problem that we were really trying to um, address with our project um, is related to the housing deficit. Um, and some of the uh, restrictions on housing in Brazil and in much of the world. Um, so in Brazil, there's an extremely low income, um, extremely low income households actually bear 84% of the housing deficit in Brazil. Um, and in inadequate housing um, has caused a lack of access to clean water um, and proper sanitation. Um, and many of these low income residents who um, aren't able to access affordable and safe housing are pushed into the periphery and often live in informal settlements. Um, social movements such as um, the partners that we worked with have stepped in to address this issue. Oh, sorry for a second, I thought it wasn't moving forward. Um, have stepped in to address this issue and build self-managed housing. Um, and I'll go into what self-managed housing is just a little bit further. Self-managed housing is a democratically produced and, gov and governed through practices of mutual aid, collective property, and joint effort. Um, and this type of housing is made by and for the residents. Um, so this is an alternative for a lot of the um, people who are excluded or priced out of affordable housing. Um, and they play a huge role in actually creating this housing as well as um, participating in all the steps that go into it. And that much of this housing is produced in what are considered areas of permanent protection, um, which is land that um, requires reforestation, um, and that's part of the re requirements for um, these residents to be able to use the land for their housing. And we'll go into this a little bit more in future slides. Um, so areas of permanent protections are defined as protected areas covered or uncovered by native vegetation, with the environmental function of preserving water resources, the landscape, and biodiversity. Um, just to go a little bit more into climate change, um, so the country of Brazil is the eighth, has the eighth largest share of the world's greenhouse gas emissions per capita, um, but they're the largest contributor of land use and land cover change um, with carbon dioxide net emissions worldwide. Um, so that's referring to um, the amount of land that's used um, or that's um, deforested for agriculture or other um, uses, they're the largest contributor. Um, and also, of course, the home of the Atlantic Forest. So these are some of the partners that we worked with. Um, Brian's going to go into further detail on each one of them, so I'll uh, leave that, but just wanted to show some of their logos and thank them for their support. And then these are a couple images from a 2020 capstone um, that was um, led by Ana Paula that went to Brazil to provide um, more support with advocating for self-managed housing. Um, so a couple images of uh, some protests and then some of the work that was being done on um, the pilot site, which we'll show in the next slide that we worked with. Um, so this site here is the Dorothy Stang and Geronimo Alves um, Martin Luther King site. Um, so this is going to be a self-managed housing site that will provide housing for over 700 families. Um, this is the pilot site that we worked with. You can see in the background of this image, um, there's some industry in the back. So that just kind of gives a idea of the type of land that's often um, provided for affordable housing. Um, it's not often in the greatest areas and there's often a lot of other environmental challenges that residents who are working with self-managed housing have to deal with. Um, so we did the majority of the work that we did in uh, Brazil was at the site with building a tree nursery to help them with meeting some of the environmental regulations um, regarding reforestation uh, with their APP site. 
So I'll hand it over to Brian uh, to continue the rest of our presentation. Thanks, Roland. <clears throat> and so, like Roland said, uh, the movements like the social movement are being relegated to land on the periphery of the city, and it's land with onerous uh, environmental compliance regulations. And a lot of the environmental problems on these lands aren't even due to anything that was done by the social movement. They're just things that the social movement has to fix in order to be able to move people into the housing that they create. So specifically on this site, we were involved in three sort of categories of activity. Uh, before and during our field visit, we were engaged in partner meetings to bring everybody together and gather the resources for the nursery construction on this site. We engaged in some construction activity. We engaged in a little bit <laughs> of construction activity, uh, yeah, a small part of that, um, and uh, opening ceremony for the nursery. And then there's this last step of creating the circle, and that refers to the circular economy connection. So this nursery is going to achieve environmental compliance at the site, but it also has the potential to help other similar organizations reach the same level of compliance and uh, serve as an economic activity at the site to support people's livelihoods. So uh, one of our first partner visits was to Reflorista. This is a nursery in the Sao Paulo area, and they gave us our seeds for the nursery. Uh, this also had a circular economy component because they're a similar mission-driven organization, and they gave us a very good deal on the seeds that we use for the nursery. Uh, the next visit we did was to Usina, which is a technical assistance firm. This is the organization that works with the social movements that are developing uh, these enormous mutual aid housing complexes. And these are the people who say, you have this many resources. These are the quality of materials that you can use. This is how you arrange the units and the rooms on the site. Uh, so we looked at some of their mock-ups, as you can see here, of what the completed development with you know 700 units is going to look like once the site is ready to build on. And then another important partner meeting was the groups who are moving into the building and leading its development. And that would be UMM SP and MSD Last Day One. Um, so we went to several of their meetings in the Sao Paulo area and at the site uh, before the nursery construction. This is a photo of some of the work that we were engaged in. You can see uh, Dow fellow Kira Barston engaged in the building of a table, <laughs> uh, along with Fanta, who was one of our team leads in Roland here, um, and Anna Paula, our advisor. Uh, and so we constructed some of these things. Some of these are the actual tables that are going to be used in the greenhouse. Some of them were used in the soil amendment process. Uh, so as you can see here, the uh, Obviously, there's a lot of land on the site, uh, and that land has to be amended. The soil that we're using has to be amended, and you know, uh, phosphorus was added. Other components were added to the soil to make sure that it would grow the plants appropriately. Uh, and then there was a sort of ceremony uh, celebrating the construction of the greenhouse and uh, beginning a series of educational programming that I believe is still ongoing. Yeah. So then moving on to the circular economy aspect and some of the work we did connecting different areas of circular economy in Brazil, uh, Recycle Organico is an organization engaged in composting and within a sort of community structure. So they work in a favela and they go door to door and pick up people's compost waste and bring it to uh, these piles, as you can see here, uh, for composting. And we're looking at how that program can be implemented at a site like the one we're working on. Another potential connection is Anshieta land occupation. So this is sort of what our site might have looked like before it became recognized legally as a site for development. Uh, Anshieta land occupation started when a few families moved in overnight to a parcel of land, and then more families came and more families live, came, and now there's thousands of people living on this land, and they're engaged in negotiations with the property owner to purchase it. So this is one of the movement groups that may be a uh, buyer of the trees that are being produced in the nursery that we'd like to support in achieving environmental compliance at their areas of permanent protection. 
And then the last slide of the photos here is of Alexios Jafet Autogest Stau site. This is the largest Autogest Stau site in Latin America, I believe, and it has over a thousand units. Uh, and as you can see, there's some areas where there can be trees planted on the side. They also have some environmental protection compliance regulations. I think they're a little different than the APP, but they're also relevant and a potential buyer of the trees. So some of our final deliverables are a nursery booklet with an explanation of each of the workshops that's been held and some documentation materials for that. Uh, we've got a visions for a circular and solidarity economy report that ties together some of the key concepts of the solidarity economy that we've seen at play in Sao Paulo. A climate justice report, analyzing climate justice and mapping indicators in the East District of Sao Paulo. And then a website that's going to combine all of the other resources that we have and make it accessible to members of the movement, people who are interested in replicating something like this in another space. Uh, a couple other deliverables I want to mention quickly are micro videos that will be available on the website of the training, uh, building a community nursery booklet, and strengthening the circular and solidarity economy for climate resilience in Sao Paulo's East District. So these are some pictures of what those deliverables actually look like. And lastly, thank you from our team, particularly to all of you, the audience, to the Dow Foundation, and to the Sustainability Institute. Thank you. Can you define Can you define solidarity economy? I don't think I've heard that phrase before. So I, I think there's lots of definitions of solidarity going around. Um, I would say that it's like organizations that are working towards the same social goals of, you know, broadly social justice, which could also bear defining here, um, and want to support each other through economic means to do that. Yeah. <coughs> Other questions or comments for the team? This doesn't work that well, so maybe speak loud into it, or <laughs> it might be useless. Thanks for your presentation. I'm interested in the opportunities to scale what you did. Having worked with several organizations, do you know how they might try to take what you've given them and use it at other sites? Yeah, so generally, a lot of these organizations, they really do do already like work together um, in a very effective manner that um, shares a lot of information. And so they're planning on um, some of the resources that we helped put together, um, sharing those with uh, the other movement partners um, and using that as um, opportunities to kind of scale this up. Um, and then, um, as Bryant mentioned, with the nursery that we're uh, that we helped them put together. Um, there is going to be about five, I think 5,000 plants or, or seeds that are planted. Um, and the site that we worked with only needs about 700. So there's a, a huge amount of opportunity to uh, provide other sites and other uh, movement partners with um, uh, uh, seeds to plant trees. Anybody else? Comments? Questions? One more right Hi, thank you. Uh, I found this really interesting. And um, I'm kind of curious, uh, local government wasn't mentioned too much. I'm kind of curious if they had more of a, was it more of an antagonistic or a um, more of a positive relationship? I guess, how do they view this kind of work? We may do a, a tag team here because I think there's a lot to say about it. Um, it's a complex relationship. The place where I saw local government, like the, the complexity of the relationship borne out the most was in Anchieta land occupation, which wasn't our actual site, but I think it's demonstrative in that. Um, so this is a, a land occupation where they are building on land that they don't own, and obviously the government doesn't support that, but uh, the government is actively engaged in connecting them to public utilities in part because then the government can receive revenue from those utilities because uh, you know, right now they're, I think, Los Gatos, the, <laughs> the, the clips on the electricity and stuff. So they're, they're using the uh, services, but it's not metered. So there's a, uh, just like there's sort of the tension between the environmental compliance and the social goals, and those are kind of merging in this project. We're moving them in the same direction. It was 
hopeful to see that the local government is also trying to work with the movement to achieve the same goals, even when there's obviously some tension in those. Brian did a great job, so I'll just add a little bit more to that. Um, I think from my understanding, a lot of the local government um, and their feelings towards these movements is um, supported by how the national government is kind of feeling at the time. Um, and throughout, you know, the last, I don't know how many years, but the, um, the administration that was kind of controlling um, the Brazilian government um, didn't have as much support or any support towards these um, social movements. But thankfully, uh, there was a recent election that kind of completely flipped things on its head. And a lot of the movement partners are really excited to get a lot more support um, financially, especially um, now that um, the former administration is out of office.